Hi, it's Annie Grace. I hope everybody's doing great. Oh, so, hello. I am answering readers' questions. And this question actually wasn't really a readers' question. It was just something that I saw on a Facebook post. And it was basically like, <laughs> how am I ever supposed to have fun without a drink? And oh, I remember feeling this way. Like, so I can literally put myself in the moment of feeling this way of feeling like, what's the point if I can't drink? What is the point of anything if I can't drink? And I remember feeling this way lots of different times. I remember feeling this way when I was pregnant with my son and it was my first pregnancy. So it was the first time that I'd really given up alcohol and I was drinking quite a lot by then. Interestingly, my drinking escalated after each pregnancy. I started drinking more than I did before I gave it up for the nine months. So there's some interesting dynamics in that about, you know, forbidden fruit and how much I'd put alcohol on kind of a pedestal, stuff like that. But in any event, I remember sitting at a barbecue and it was my good friend's 30th birthday and we were all in this park. It was beautiful. It was in Aspen, Colorado. They were having they had all sorts of different uh, drinks. It was, I think, Mexican themed. So we had like the best food, carnitas and, you know, refried beans and all of this stuff. And I remember sitting there with this group of girls that I'd known really my whole life. I mean, I went to a very small school, so we'd known each other from kindergarten all the way through high school. It was a group of 50 of us. And, you know, some people came and some people left, but not very many. So there was this core group that I literally don't remember meeting these women. And we were sitting there and I was, I think, 16 or 18 weeks pregnant. So I wasn't really even showing yet. And I had just, it was actually, I was telling people at this, at this birthday party that I was pregnant and I, everybody was drinking and I was drinking, I don't know what it was, water or something really boring. And I remember sitting there on this beautiful day, in one of the most beautiful places on the planet, looking around, hanging out with my friends and feeling like, What's the point of even being here if I can't have a drink? And it was so true for me. It was so true that it was the alcohol that would have made that situation fun. And because I was thinking that way, of course, I was, I was really miserable for a while. And then interestingly, we started talking, the conversation moved past surface level conversation and we started talking about real things. We started to get into the nitty gritty of our lives and and some of them already had kids and what was happening with everybody. And we started to really talk and share and be together. And I don't remember thinking that anymore. I remember leaving that thing and being like, wow, I kind of did have fun. And it was so weird, but I would have never allowed that opportunity for things actually to become fun had I not sat there in the discomfort of them not being fun at first. And one of the interesting things about that is of course that I wouldn't have done that unless I was pregnant and felt like, no, I just can't drink. I would never have done that. I would have been like, okay, I'm going to try not to drink at this barbecue. But then I would have had all those thoughts about how it's not fun. What's the point if I'm not drinking all this stuff? And I would have literally just poured myself a drink. But because I was forced to not drink and I was forced to sit there with all these people that I had known my whole life and I was forced to move past the initial discomfort. And then we did get into the deeper conversations as, as it will happen if you sit down with a group of people and give it 20 or 30 minutes without the alcohol, by the way, either way, this will happen. You start talking about important things and then we really did connect and we really did, you know, laugh. And I remember laughing and I remember having a, a good time. And, you know, in hindsight, I think one of the most interesting parts of that experience wasn't just that it did end up being fine once I allowed it, but also that it was the belief itself that it wasn't going to be fun that prevented so much of it being fun from the get go, because it did turn out to be fun. But I was so miserable in my stuckness of feeling sorry for myself and feeling like it was never going to be fun. And what is that? That's just a thought. That's just the thought that it's not going to be fun without a drink. And then I was looking at this from kind of a macro perspective, like really backing up and really looking at this whole experience because it's a very poignant memory for me of when I really believed that life wasn't going to be fun without any, without drinking. And so years later, I stopped drinking. I think it was at least, I think it was at least six years later that I stopped drinking from that moment. And I remember thinking back on this one specific situation and, and asking a new question. And I was like, okay, here I was in, again, one of the most beautiful places. 
and we were having incredible food. There was great music. All the people I'd known since like my childhood were there and I wasn't having any fun for a while because I was thinking of how much fun I wasn't having and without a drink and I was feeling sorry for myself. But if I go back in my history, I had had, I mean, imagine the history I have with these women, right? Like we, sixth grade, we would all sit together around lunchroom tables and literally laugh until somebody snorted milk or juice out of their nose um, because we were just making jokes and we were giggly. Like I remember, you know, playground and kindergarten and playing silly chasing games with, with all these kids. And, you know, it's all the same people and the same place. It was where I grew up, yet I wasn't having fun, even though I had this whole long history of having amazing times with all of these people, this shared history of all of this laughter, all of this joy, all of this togetherness. And suddenly all that got thrown out the window because I had this belief that, well, if I'm not drinking and everybody else is, I'm not going to have fun. And I guess I tell you that whole long story to say, number one, I get it. I so get it. That was so true for me until it wasn't. And the way it became not true for me was through one big fat word, curiosity. As soon as I started to get curious about, okay, I'm not going to prejudge this. I'm not going to prejudge this as miserable that it's not even, there's no point in going if I'm not drinking. I'm going to just open up curiosity. I'm going to say, how is it going to be? How is it going to be? Let's see. Maybe it will be miserable. (laughs) Maybe I'll be sitting by myself. Maybe they'll all be drinking like, oh, she's not drinking. We're not going to talk to her. And they'll all move away from me and I'll just be crying on the lawn. Like maybe that will happen. Or maybe what happened will happen that, you know, eventually Everybody would start to talk about more interesting things and deeper things, and we move past surface level conversation, and it would be great and actually fun, surprisingly fun. But curiosity of having the experience, making a firm commitment to myself, I wasn't going to drink because that's obviously what happened when I was pregnant. But even after I was pregnant and when I was really exploring my relationship with alcohol, I would make a firm commitment to myself. I'm not going to drink at this happy hour. I'm not going to drink at this sales event. I'm not going to drink at this New Year's Eve party, whatever it was, no matter what, I'm not going to drink, but I'm going to go into it. Not with this preconceived notion of, oh, it's going to be amazing. Everybody's told me life without alcohol is fun. It's sunshine and rainbows. There's going to be unicorns. It's going to be brilliant. No, none of that. None of these expectations that it was going to be great, because of course those are going to let me down, but also none of the expectations that it was going to be miserable. And so just putting aside all of my expectations and approaching it literally like an experiment, how is this going to be? What is going to happen? I am curious. I'm curious how I'm going to feel. I'm curious what people are going to say. I'm curious how people are going to react. I'm curious how I'm going to react. I'm curious how I'm going to feel the next day. I'm curious about if me feeling good about myself the next day that I'm not hungover is going to outweigh the moments of discomfort where I walk in and I'm like, how's it going to be? I'm curious about the anxiety I might feel. I'm curious about the second time I do it, by the way, because I'll tell you one thing, the first time you do anything, the first time you go to happy hour without drinking, the first time you, you know, do something without drinking it is it can be like nails on a chalkboard it can be painful and intense and anxiety inducing even with the curiosity but the second time once you got one rep under your belt once you know you can do it one time oh my gosh the whole game changes you're like it's like this level of confidence that you didn't even realize you had you're like oh my gosh so so I'm here on the other side of lots of these different self-induced experiments of what's it going to be like, putting down my expectations to tell you, yeah, no, not only is it fun, but actually neurochemically, life becomes a lot more fun because alcohol, like any addictive substance, creates the brain, a reaction in the brain, it creates a reaction in the brain to where it actually reduces your ability to feel pleasure without it. Now, that's just the truth. You can learn a lot more about that at, um, actually, by the way, if you're curious about an experiment, alcoholexperiment.com, it's always free. It's a 30-day just experiment. You can go through it drinking. You can go through it not drinking either way just to get the information, but it's really a 30-day alcohol-free experiment, and you can learn all of these sorts of things, like why is it that the brain actually steals your joy from other things when you're doing anything that's addictive? You know, when my kids are playing too many video games, which happened, you know, so much over quarantine, they stopped having fun in other ways. They couldn't have fun without the video games. And now that they're not playing video games, my son, all he wants to do is just go outside and, and, you know, ride his bike or bat and ball, you know, because he just like got tired of him one day and he's like, this sucks. 
<laughs> Nothing else is fun. And I explained to him why. And he's like, oh, well, that's not good because actually anything that's addictive from video games to alcohol to heroin, it does the same thing in the brain and it dampens your ability to feel pleasure when you're not doing the thing. And you need to reawaken that. So yes, neurochemically, life becomes a lot more fun. But actually, if you let go of the belief that this is going to suck, that I can't do anything without it, and you say, you know what, I'm not going to jump to the other way that this is going to be amazing. I'm not going to force in that belief. I'm just going to allow, allow for the big fat C curiosity to come in and just be curious for a time or two, at least two. Because again, that first time can be hard, but that second time changes the game. Say, how's it going to be? Then, you know, make the decision for yourself. And so anyway, life can be a lot more fun. You just have to go through the discomfort of, of seeing it for yourself. I think that's really true. Hi, I'm so excited, you guys, because we are just about to start another live alcohol experiment. And if you do not know about the alcohol experiment, you need to literally drop everything right now and go to thisnakedmind.com forward slash LAE. That's LAE for live alcohol experiment. And here's the thing. This 30-day challenge is designed to interrupt your patterns and put you back in touch with the best version of you. You know it's that version that's living the most joyful life, that version that doesn't need alcohol to relax, or have a good time and that version that's having more fun and is more peaceful than ever. Again, it's a 30-day challenge. It's live. It's starting on the first. So hurry up. Go to thisnakedmind.com forward slash LAV. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.